Azure Files, Active Directory. Let's finally put those hands together. So in this video, I want to talk about the new Active Directory Domain Services integration for Azure Files, something that I'm actually pretty excited about. So if we take a step back, I can think about we have Azure Storage. So an Azure Storage account is deployed to a region. It has a certain type. There's general purpose V2, which is what we're going to commonly use. There's also things like blob and files for particular functionalities. If I think about just a regular storage account, I create that storage account. And I can have a number of different types of storage with that storage account. I can think about blob. This could be block blob. This could be page blob, which we use for VHDs that managed disk sits on top of. We have a pen blob. We could have tables. We could have queues. And then we have files. And files is what I want to focus on in this session. Now for files, I can kind of talk to this through SMB 2.1. SMB 3 kind of plus, and obviously REST, the REST API. And when I have files, it's really broken down in, I have a share, and then under that share, I can create directories, i.e. containers, and then files, i.e. objects. Now when I access this, if it's SMB 2.1, I have to access it from something in the same region as the storage account. If I use SMB 3, then I can access it outside the region. I can access it from on-premises because it's going to encrypt the connection. Um, same if I use that REST API. But the challenge is, historically, how do I do kind of more granular authorization? How do I do ackling of this content? This storage account, the storage account has this all-powerful access key. There's actually two of them. So we have two keys, so we can alternate between them if we have to regenerate. And if I connect via that access key, I can do anything. I can do any action, I can access any object. So not really very granular. Then we have the idea of these shared access signatures. A shared access signature enables me to set a so, certain set of actions I can perform on a set scope. So the scope could be a certain directory, could be certain files, so very granular. But the shared access signatures I could only use via REST. So the access keys, great, I can use across all of them. I could map to a share as the access key and I can do anything. If I want this more granular shared access signature, I had to use the REST API. So it's not very useful if I just want to map for general user content. Now, in addition to this, I can think about, great, we have Azure. And I can think about we have Azure Files. And under that, I create a share. Meanwhile, on premises, I have Windows-based shares as well. Maybe I have many of them. And one of the great technologies we have is Azure File Sync. And what this enables me to do is I have server endpoints and I can have a cloud endpoint. And they're part of a sync group. So as I kind of write data to a file share, it synchronizes up to the cloud and then we'll go and synchronize to all the other copies. So I could have many, many Windows-based file servers. Fantastic. They're all going to synchronize via the cloud endpoint. I can even tier content. So if I have a certain quota of content I want to keep locally, then if it's not accessed for a certain amount of time, I'll just store it in Azure Files. I can pull it down if I need to. Now with this, I could have ACLs on these files, so I set permissions on that content. The ACL would replicate up and be stored, and then would replicate back down to any copies. But if I, as a user, 
access the file share directly, those ACLs were not enforced. They were maintained for that synchronization, but if I was here and I accessed it directly, those ACLs did not get enforced. I could access anything. But it was great for that synchronization. If there was an actual disaster, the solution would be, well, I would spin up an IaaS VM, I would create a file share in there and add it to the sync group, and then I would get the content, and then that would honor and enforce any ACLs. So I could do that. So Azure File Sync is fantastic, not enabling me to use the ACLs in the cloud. I still need IaaS virtual machines or VMs on premises hosting the file shares. I can't go serverless. So what we introduced is if I can think about, okay, I have my Azure file share. Now on premises, or it could be in IaaS virtual machines, I have Active Directory. Great. And what we commonly do is we synchronize to Azure Active Directory. So we have Azure AD Connect and we synchronize that to Azure AD. And there was an integration for Azure Files and Azure Active Directory through Azure AD Domain Services. So what Azure AD Domain Services is, and there's another video on this, I can kind of think about, well, it uses this content to create this Azure AD Domain Services, which is really manifested as some managed domain controllers that gets linked to a certain VNet. So in this model, I could now actually, from someone joined, so if I'm a machine, I would be joined to that domain. I could now access this, I could write ACLs. Um, I could use RoboCopy to copy the ACLs over. Um, I could use iCalcs to set the ACLs. I couldn't use Explorer. But now I could actually have ACLs on Azure Files. This file share could not be part of Azure File Sync. That would not work. So this is completely isolated away from Azure File Sync. It was a separate file share. But now I could set ACLs on it. And for people on machines in joint to Azure AD Domain Services, I could now have ACLing based on the user objects that had been populated from Azure AD. But I had to have Azure AD Domain Services. I had to be joined to Azure AD Domain Services. It didn't work with Azure File Sync. And honestly, a lot of people didn't really want to get into Azure AD Domain Services. But it did kind of open the world to the idea that, hey, my Azure File Share, my storage account, would actually now kind of register and support Kerberos. So I would actually have an object in that Azure AD domain services that represented the storage account. So now I could actually authenticate using Kerberos. I would go and get a token for my storage account and it would use it. So we're getting close. So what I'm excited about and the goal for this video is now we have integration just with regular Active Directory domain services. Um, I don't need the Azure AD domain services. So the idea now here is great. I've got my regular AD. Now I always draw it in green to show it's kind of on-premises. It doesn't have to be. These could be in IaaS virtual machines. The point is this is regular Active Directory domain services. The role I have in Windows Server. Okay. We still have Azure, obviously. We still have Azure AD. So I'm still synchronizing, I still need to populate Azure AD using Azure AD Connect. Now a big difference, I should have pointed this out, for this to work, Azure AD Domain Services, you have to send the password hashes. That was a requirement. Because it has to go and populate this um, to enable the authentication with the same password. So I was actually sending the password hash into the cloud, not just the hash of the hash, the actual hash. I don't have to send the hashes here. I just have to have the objects replicated. Now, what I'm going to have is, yep, I've got my Azure file share, and I'm going to register that 
with my domain. Now, when I do this, the machine I'm going to do this registration on is, has line of sight to my domain controllers. This doesn't have to have line of sight from a networking perspective. It's kind of an offline um, join. But it's going to be a machine that I'm going to use to perform the action. And what it's going to do is, once again, in my Active Directory, it's going to create a computer account, or it could be a service principal, that represents that storage account. So if that storage account was SA1, it's going to create a computer account SA1. It's going to create an access key in the storage account, curb1, that it's going to use for the password for that computer object. But essentially what we're doing is, once again, we're going to now pull Kerberos for our storage account. So I have now registered this storage account into my Active Directory. So I have to have Azure AD populated with the objects. I don't need the password hash. Storage account is now registered. Phenomenal. Now, at the share level, so on the share, there are some new roles, and I'll show this when I demo it, different levels of access, that I will grant users in the Azure AD various permissions. I'm going to give them a certain role. That could be how you can connect to it, but you can't change stuff. You can connect and fully manage. So in the Azure connection, API, ARM, I'm setting permissions on the share on who can access the share. It's the same account, remember, the account's got replicated over, but I'm sending it via the Azure AD. That's why it has to be um, replicated. Now, I'm a machine, such as say I'm a regular user, and I'm this green user, sitting at my machine. I can now connect to the share, providing I've got permissions at the share level, so I could, just like normal, I could map a drive, and now using SMB, I can set the ACLs. This will be SMB 3 plus if I was outside the region, so it's an encrypted connection. I can now set the ACLs, and it's completely transparent. I am now serverless. There is no Windows file share I have to have that's replicating content up. This could just be a pure file share. However, it could also be that part of the Azure file sync. Those ACLs that it's kind of replicating up will now be maintained. So that file share is up here in Azure Files and the ACLs were populated using Azure File Sync. That's okay. It will be maintained. I can now access the Azure Files directly if I wanted to. So this is phenomenal. This is now just really a transparent authentication, authorization, ACLs on Azure Files, just with regular Active Directory. The Active Directory could be housed on premises, it could be hybrid, I've got domain controllers in ISVMs, it could just all be in Azure, it doesn't matter. But now I can have a completely transparent experience for the end user. Now I might build this scenario out end to end. You can imagine, so storage account, yes I have the public endpoint. Remember also we have private link. So I might have kind of a VNet, I might use private link to create an IP address in that virtual network. And then maybe um, I've got ExpressRoute connecting my on-prem network into that virtual network using private peering, and it uses the endpoint to get to the, the share. There's other things I can build on this. The key point now, Active Directory based ACLs on Azure Files. Don't need Azure AD domain services, works with Azure File Sync. Now, I cannot use both. I cannot use kind of the Active Directory integrated authentication and this hybrid Azure AD domain service, but honestly, I don't know why you'd want to. You, if I can do this, that's much better than using this option. So that's the idea. Let's actually go and see this in action. In this environment, I have a storage account. There's nothing really special about it. The only special thing would be I created it in West Central because currently that's one of the regions where I can do this AD integrated authentication. 
and I created a file share. Again, nothing super interesting about this. So what I now need to do is tie in the storage account with my Active Directory. Now to do this, there's actually a very easy little script that hooks into the various AZ modules. Now you can go ahead and download this script from GitHub. And then once you've installed the scripts, you can import the module and you literally run one command. So I'm doing the join AZ storage account for auth. I give it the resource group of my storage account, the name of my storage account, the domain I want to join to, and then the distinguished name of my organizational unit. So I've created a special OU SPNs in my domain just so I can kind of show that object. So I would execute this command. Now, once I do that, that's it. I mean, that's literally the setup I have to perform. If I was to go and look at my Active Directory, you can see I now have under SPNs, a computer account, because that's the default. I could via a flag set it to create a service principal instead. But here I can see, hey, there's a computer account that is the name of my storage account. What it also did is it went ahead and created a Kerberos key. So if I dump out all of my keys, including the Kerberos keys, I've got the regular storage access keys and I've got a curb one and I've got a curb two because I ran this a few different times as I was experimenting. You can also see if I was to check my directory service options, you can see it's using Active Directory. You can always go and hook into the actual properties of that as well and see my actual domain, the domain GUID, domain SID, etc., etc. But once I have done that, I could now go back to the file share and now I'll be able to access the access control. And I'll pretend I did that on purpose. I'm actually on the wrong storage account, which is why it's erroring. It's saying, hey, you've not done this. If I actually go to the correct storage account, always a useful thing to do. So I jump over to my storage accounts. I want the one in West Central. So there it is, West Central files. Once again, I can go to my Azure files, my file shares. There's my file share. And this time I can do the access control because I've done that AD integration. And there are these three special roles available to me. So remember access to the share I set here. So here, if I actually go into a particular share, so I'll go into my data share. Here I can go to the access control. I can look at the role assignments I've done. So if we actually look, storage file data SMB share elevated contributor, I give to myself, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne. So the name kind of suggests I can read, write, delete, modify the NTFS permissions via SMB. Now there are also two other roles. So if I go and look for my storage, you'll see there's also storage file SMB share contributor. So I can do the read, write, delete access in Azure storage files over SMB, but I can't change the NTFS permissions. And then there's also a share reader. As the name suggests, I can read stuff from it. So they're the different roles I could assign at the share to let me connect via SMB. So in my case, as I showed, I gave a number of accounts that permission. So now just using regular net use, I can connect to it. Remember, if I want to connect to it outside the region, I need a client that supports SMB 3 plus. So I can do that encrypted connection, which will let me connect outside the region. So if I jump over, I have made that connection. So for this machine, I've connected to that storage account to the data share. And from that point, I can go and browse the files. Now notice, if I right click and do properties, I will be able to actually see the security. I see all the various permissions. 
if I go to actual objects. So my Sir Oliver for this file. Well, only myself and the administrators, no authenticated users or regular users have any access. So only I should be able to access this file. Then there's a Superman picture. If I look at Superman's picture, well, I can see, well, Clark Kent's the owner, but other users can kind of access as well. So I should be able to read that based on the ACLs. Again, I'm on a machine that's joined to my regular Active Directory. If I look at who am I? I'm a member of that domain, I'm just John. I should also be able to look at the Sir Oliver picture because I am John and I have those permissions. And there's a picture of my dog as some kind of uh, general. A little bit odd, I know. But you can see I have that full SMB connection and I can set all of the ACLs. And these could be set directly, this could be part of Azure File Sync. So now I'm gonna connect as a different user. So now I'm connected as Clark. Again, we can check that. Who am I? Yep, Savile Tech Clark. Now remember, I was the owner of Superman, so sure enough, I can look at a picture of myself. If I look at Sir Oliver, well, I don't have permissions to do that. So saying check permissions and try again. So I'm connected directly to Azure Files. I can access the ACLs just using my SMB connection and they are enforced. That's kind of the key point. So again, this could be a pure serverless now, file share capability. And I should point out that it's not super important. I'm actually in a different region. So this client is in South Central, the file share was in West Central. So it is working across regions because of that SMB3+. So it can be serverless, or it could be part of Azure File Sync, and I can still go ahead and access that share. So that was it just kind of showing this in action. So I hope that was useful. I hope you think this is as cool as I do. Um, super easy to set up as you saw. Um, Come in preview, so only certain regions support it. But go and try it out. Uh, I think it's super cool. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video soon. Please like, subscribe, share this video. Take care.